all right so i'm back with another video and i just kind of want to chat it up with you all a bit while i do some makeup and these are typically easier for me to do when i do the voiceover you know i can just go ahead and talk to you all that way i can kind of concentrate on doing my makeup and you would think after all of these years that i would have that mastered i would have that down like totally easy for me to do but it's not quite like that but anyway before i get into talking about the topics you know i just wanted to say the things that i'm going to mention if it doesn't apply let it fly and I know for a lot of you all, especially if you're in my age group, you've probably already, you know, mastered a lot of these. Uh, a few of them, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get there myself. But yeah, basically, I just want to talk about some things that we could possibly stop doing or engaging in that if we did stop these things, it probably would make our lives a little bit uh, uh, less difficult, make our lives a little bit more happier, uh, you know, however you want to name it. But the first one that I wanted to talk about is holding on to regrets. And, you know, basically, you know, some people may say that ship is sailed, what's done is done. Let bygones be bygones. There's no use crying over spilled milk. However you want to say it, just let it go. You know, when you hold on to regrets, as you know, that kind of stuff just kind of sits and festers and eats away with you just really every second of the day. And things like that can stress you out and stress leads to premature aging. And let me tell you, none of us want that. Next up is stop wearing other people's insecurities and you may say what do i mean by that have you ever had someone come to you and say well you know you're too old to do this or you could never be that or um that doesn't look right on you or i could never do this they are projecting their own insecurities upon you when they do that stop letting that affect you if they say that let that be that and you go ahead and do what you're going to do, whatever that is that you were doing, whether it be a certain outfit or wearing makeup or going to a particular place. If it's something that's going to make you happy and you're not hurting anyone or breaking any laws, let them deal with their own securities. Stop letting other folks project their issues upon you and recognize it immediately when they try to do it just kind of stop it nip it in the bud so next up stop living for the destination but instead live for the journey let me say it again stop living for the destination but instead live for the journey so many times you know we're we're so caught up in getting to wherever it is that we need to go that we just totally miss all of the beautiful things that are along the way. It kind of reminds you or makes you think of tunnel vision, you know, when you're driving. You only see what's right in front of you. You know, you're only concentrating on your destination. You you don't see uh, the beautiful landscape as you're traveling or the beautiful, whatever it is, you know, just slow it down a little bit and enjoy the journey after the entire trip is taken or whatever it is that you're trying to do once you look at the overall picture you'll realize that it's actually better that way and um, really more fulfilling I think next up is stop seeking validation from others if you're dressing a certain way because you're seeking compliments from a friend or a, a husband or a boyfriend or or whomever, then you you might want to rethink it. And you know that that's kind of stretching it when I when I say that. But if you always are uh, seeking validation from others, definitely. 
definitely take a look at that because seeking validation can be emotionally draining. Um, it can lower your self-esteem. At the end of the day, what you think of yourself is what's most important. And you hear a lot of people say, I don't care what other people think. I don't care what other people think. When I hear people say that, I'm wondering, but do they really not care <laughs> what other people think? You know, it just kind of always makes me me wonder because it's easier said for me to just say, it only matters what you think and you don't have to seek validation from others. But at the end of the day, your opinion is the only one that really matters. You have to do what makes you happy. Life is too short to try to worry about if this particular person is going to like a certain thing or if that particular person is going to like a certain thing or if they're not going to like it. Life is too short. You've got to seek validation from within yourself. Learn learn yourself. Figure out what it is about you that makes you happy and go with that and live your life and don't worry about the validation of others. So this next one is going to sound so cliche-ish, but find joy in the small things, okay? And things that you can actually take control of or have control over, as opposed to, you know, just concentrating on things that are just kind of beyond uh, the scope of your control. If you concentrate on the smaller things, you will be so much happier. Trust me. I know. <laughs> Trust me. If Because like, think about it right now. Think about just the small things that are around you. What do you see around you? The things that are small, that are tangible, that you can actually have control over. How do they make you feel? Are they things that you enjoy? No matter how small, do you enjoy it? You know, so concentrate on the small things and how much they mean to you, how happy or good they make you feel. And, you know, you'll notice like a, a change in how you're feeling if you concentrate on that as opposed to some big, enormous issue or problem or whatever that you, while you know you'll have to deal with it, but just not concentrate on it. Um, I just want to share a little story with you. Um, recently, well, maybe about a year, well, going on a couple of months back, I had hip surgery. And before I had my hip surgery, the pain was unbearable. I could not walk. Um, I was on crutches. I would, my son graduated. I went to his graduation in a wheelchair. It was horrible. And that was, that was, that was big. And then it's like, it was a large part of my daily life. So it's like during that time, it was hard for me not to concentrate on that, but I had to force myself to do little things that I actually enjoyed and just kind of piece them together day by day until I could get my hip surgery. And once I got that, you know, I feel as though my life changed. You know, now my other hip is starting to mess up. So I'm going to have to get that replaced, but I'm just going to wait to, I'm going to wait on that till it gets really, really bad. And I know that's probably, I know I probably shouldn't do that, but um, I really don't want to be operated on again. Um, just kind of having a artificial thing in my body, you know, it's just, it's just kind of weird, you know, even though I do feel a hundred percent better, but I'm saying all of that to say, uh, just to share my personal experience of how there was a big, negative thing going on in my life. And I literally had to break it down into bite-sized pieces and just kind of just think about all of the small things 
you know, even each time that I saw my children, my children aren't a small thing, but just me looking at them, just their presence, you know, if I was in the living room and they would come in and I would see them, just the small things, I would, I would just concentrate on that. So try that, you know, the small things and see if that will change your outlook. So next up, stop being a people pleaser. And we all know people pleasers are pretty much concerned about making other people happy, typically at the expense of their own well-being. And, you know, let's be real, you know, all of us do have some people pleasing tendencies, you know, just, just a little, (laughs) but you know, you run into problems when it's excessive, when it's with everyone, people pleasers run into problems when they view their needs of others as more important than their own mental health or emotional or physical or even spiritual needs. So an example of a people pleaser would be saying yes to social events, even when you're exhausted and you want to rest or taking on more work or spending far too much of your own money on gifts for someone else to the point where you're in financial distress. So yeah, people pleasing, if you're doing it, stop it, stop it. If you're doing it, I would say a little bit because you know, if you have a loved one, you do want to see them happy. Some people, the people pleasing that I'm speaking of, you know, when you are doing it for everyone, you're doing it all the time. It's running you into the ground. That's definitely something that you should consider stopping. All right. Next up is stop wearing your assumptions. So this is kind of like the other ones, stop uh, wearing other people's insecurities, but it's kind of flipped. You know, we're talking about our assumptions and this is just simply something that you accept as true, although you have no proof. Okay. For example, that would never look good on me. I could never look good. Excuse me. I could never look that good wearing makeup. And I'm sure, ladies, if you've ever talked to your girlfriend and if if you say, oh, that wouldn't look good on me, she would probably probably tell you, oh, girl, please. Yes, it would. So if you're assuming something about yourself and you have no proof of it, then stop wearing the assumption. Stop putting that on yourself. And you really do need to be careful of that because someone else could put a false uh, narrative in your head as far as, uh, you know, proving a particular thing to be true. For example, let's say you put on some makeup and someone tells you that it looks horrible on you. Okay. And you take that as proof. So you have to you have to kind of be careful with that, but just stop assuming things about yourself. And I know that's kind of weird to say, but whatever it is that you're thinking about yourself, if you have no proof of it, then stop it. Like if you have never tried it, for example, a lot of times our assumptions of ourselves, it keeps us from even trying something. Um, that could in turn be something that's good for us, that makes us happy. So stop doing that. Okay. Let's not wear our assumptions. All right. So next up, stop selling yourself short. I think probably all of us at some point in time have probably been guilty of this. Um, just for example, how many times have you received a compliment and just kind of attempted to play it down? You know, I know I've done that before, like many times, especially uh, with my husband. If I feel that I look a certain way and if he gives me a compliment, there was a time where I would just kind of downplay what he was saying. But I've learned, 
you know, how to an ex to accept a compliment or like, have you ever been offered um, to do something or someone said that you were qualified to do a particular thing and you just kind of told them reasons why you couldn't do it or why you shouldn't do it or things like that. So if you're selling yourself short, you got to stop it. Okay. Start taking those compliments with open arms and gratitude and just basically love on yourself and accept yourself and know that you are worthy, that you are able to do whatever it is that needs to be done. Have confidence. Just know that you can. Even if you haven't or if you had any particular issues or problems with that particular thing in the past, like long ago, um, which means you no longer, you know, have the problem, you are now able and um, have the ability to do it. Definitely, you know, kind of bring that to the forefront and just stop selling yourself short. All right. And so the last one that I want to talk about is stop waiting for inspiration. Okay. So how many days, how many months, how many years have you spent waiting for inspiration? Like waiting for someone to inspire you to lose weight. I mean, I'm even guilty of that. <laughs> um, like waiting to get in a relationship, change a career, relocate, save money, start a family, start a business, you know, whatever it is, you're just waiting, waiting, waiting. So you, what's actually happening is you're just kind of surrendering to fear. And it's actually fear of the unknown, fear of the actual execution of it. So what do we do instead? You know, we just kind of numb ourselves, you know, so to speak, with uh, frivolous things, uh, you know, whatever it is that that you engage in that um, I don't want to say that you're wasting your time, but you could spend time doing or ex executing the things that you actually want to do. And it it's really normal. I'm guilty of it even like now as we speak. Um just it's just that fear, that fear of the unknown, what will happen? What uh what will I lose? What it's just so many things uh of the unknown and so the inspiration, I'm guilty of that one. And that's one that I am working on. So that concludes the video. Thank you so much if you have made it to the end. I really appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments what you think about all of the things that I talked about. Let me know if you agree with it. If you don't agree with it. Let me know if you could care less. Either way, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until my next video, smooches.